Hello and thank you for joining me today. I'm Jan Clothier from Thinking Stamping and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in New Zealand. Today I'm going to share with you um, how I made this card which is which was my crew card for the latest challenge at Colour Inspiration. Now the colour challenge was one that I personally found very challenging indeed. The colours that we had to work with were um, Pale Papaya, Mango Melody, Poppy Parade, Gorgeous Grape and Basic Black. And so, you know, often colours speak to me. You know, I, I look at a set of colours and I go, oh, you'd be great for a marine type card or you'd be great for sort of a foliage card or you'd be great for, you know, flowers. These ones, it took a few days for them to start speaking to me. And when they did, um, they said to me that maybe what I was really looking at was something autumnal, sort of autumn leaves. And so that led me to another favourite set of mine, Artistically Inked. Uh, and more importantly, perhaps the gorgeous and intricate dyes that go with it, including this beautiful leaf spray, which is the one that we're going to use. So we'll start off by looking at what you need if you are going to recreate this card. So I've got a card base in basic black, and just for some variety, I've done a tent fold card, but if you like a side fold card, then that's what you should do. So um, it is scored at... It's half the width of a, a long piece of A4, or the long, I'll rephrase that. It is half of an A4 paper cut long ways, and then scored at 14.8. Okay, so I've given it a nice little fold. Um, I've got a piece of Mango Melody, which is 14.3 centimetres by 10, which is going to go on there. And then I've got another piece of basic black, which is half a centimetre shorter again. So it is 9.5, 13.8. And because it is on black, uh, it may be difficult to see, but I've in fact already um, already embossed that using the Time Worn Type uh, 3D embossing folder. Obviously, if you don't have this, um, you might want to get it. But if you don't, you're welcome to use any kind of any embossing folder that you've got. And that is going to go on there. Uh, you're also going to need a piece of a scrap of white, basic white, to do the sentiment. You're going to need another piece of white and another piece of Mango Melody for the inside. And you're going to need a piece of either basic white or shimmery white cardstock to colour, um, to do the die cutting with. So... In this instance, I did not use shimmery white because I didn't feel it was necessary. I was cutting it into quite a small and intricate die, so I felt that I'd lose the, the sort of the shimmer that comes with the shimmery white cardstock. And there was plenty going on with the colours anyway. So I didn't, but if you like the look of shimmery cardstock, then of course that's what you should do. So I started by getting my blending brushes, and I'm just going to have a bit of scrap to tap off on. Okay, so I started by just, ran, well, semi-randomly um, adding the colours to my piece of card. And I say semi-randomly because I did want, uh, I didn't want the colours to just sort of go like one, two, three, four. I wanted uh, my final die cut to perhaps pick up different colours at the, you know, this, or the, sorry, the same colour at the top and the bottom. So that's why I'm doing this kind of 180 twist um, a fear in my in my inking. So I started with the lightest colour and then because I was going to be using the same brush I started with Pale Papaya and I'm moving into Mango Melody. So again because I'm going to die cut this up you know, if you get a few little blobs and glitches along the way yeah, it's not going to matter. You know, you're not even going to notice it in the final result. So, okay, so add in some of that. Now I'm going to switch to my red brush. Oops. And I'm going to add in some Poppy Parade. And I have to say, Poppy Parade is a colour that I have seldom used. I don't know what it is. I suppose it's because my favourite red is really... Um, 
Cherry Cobbler. That's the red. That's my go-to red. And I think that because I'm not a big fan of oranges, uh, Poppy Parade's a little bit orangey for me. I know that there are a lot of people who love it. Okay, so now we're going to add in some gorgeous grape. In my own defence, I'd also like to say that when I am not hurrying because, you know, I'm on a video and I don't want people to be hanging around just watching me sponge colour on, I'm actually a lot more careful about not getting those little blobby bits. And as I say, I'd be a lot more careful if I thought it was actually going to matter in the end whether I was totally smooth or not. Okay, so I think that's probably enough. Let's have a look. If I lay my if I lay my dye on it, am I going to pick up some of all the colours? Yes, I am. Am I going to pick up some colours twice? Yes, I will. So I'm just going to nip off and die cut that. Okay, so there's my die cut, and you can see it's a very, very intricate die, so I did run it through forward and back, forward and back, and then I used the um, die brush to just brush out the last bits, and you can see that even though it's very intricate, I have in fact got pretty much everything out very, very easily. Whoops, now the other thing, <laughs> that was my putty, my little protective putty case just went flying off the edge of my table. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to assemble because once you've done that, you've actually done the bulk of the work, apart from what happens with the sentiment because um, I did do uh, a tricky little thing with that sentiment and I'm going to share that with you next. So Okay, so my embossed black is going to go onto my piece of Mango Melody, which is also a colour I don't use very much. Um, I don't know why, because it's prettier than I remembered it. Okay, and then that matted piece I'm going to attach to the front. Always good to check you are actually up the right way. Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Okay, good. And Wiggle Room to get nice and straight. Beautiful. Now it's always a little bit of a thorny point about how you attach a delicate little die cut like that. Now what I could have done is I could have used the double-sided adhesive sheet and cut that out. Uh, and in fact I probably would have done that if I'd actually thought about it sooner and applied it to the back of my paper. However, that does also make it slightly more difficult to cut out because it's that much thicker. So what I'm going to do is my trusty trick with a silicon mat, a piece of sponge, and a little bit of glue. Just here. And, okay, so I've done that. I'm just going to pop that off to the side. I'm going to get a pair of tweezers to help me. And I'm just going to work out where I want that. I think I want it to curve a little bit more than that. Yep. And then I'm just going to... Whoops. Tap that down. Just like that. Isn't that pretty against the black? Hmm. Okay, now, as you can see in my sample card, what I did next was I added in the Happy Birthday. Now, the Happy Birthday is straight out of Artistically Inked, and one of the reasons I like this set, apart from the fact that I like this sort of faux alcohol ink effect, is that it's got four really useful um, sentiments in it. So it's a kind of a one-stop set. Anyway, so I've used the Happy Birthday, and I've already stamped it here, and you can start to see what my problem is. Now my problem is that if I get my stitched framelits, my stitched rectangle dies out, and I, I pick out what looks like it will be the right one, it actually doesn't fit. So what am I going to do? Well, I can go up to the next size, 
and that works nicely. And in fact, that is one option that you could do. You could just, that's the easiest option, is to just cut it out using the second size up because it's the right length. However, when I did that, you can see that it actually takes out quite a lot of your die cut. So I wanted it to be narrower. So here's my cunning trick, um, which some of you will know, but some of you won't. So what I did was I got my bigger die and I went and I cut it out and I cut it out like that so that I had lots of space at the bottom. Okay, so it comes out looking like that. Now obviously you don't want to use it like that because then it's kind of unbalanced. So the cunning thing you do next is you get your die and you line it up to the to the width that you do want and when you do it you will feel because because the die's got little teeth and because there are little holes around the edge where the stitches are you will feel the die grip in to the existing holes and then you simply when you're happy with the right width that you want you go away and you die cut that and what you end up with is the happy birthday, which is the right length, but also the skinnier width that I was after. Now, I made that sound very simple, and 99% of the time it is. Every now and then, you'll take it out of the dye machine, and it will have moved, and it won't have cut straight. So, you know, you have to approach this as... No, it'll work. Uh, you may need more than one go. Most of the time, you won't. So, what do we do next? Well, very simple. I'm going to find my, ah, my dimensionals. I'm going to add my usual number of dimensionals, which is plenty. And then I'm going to attach it. use my tweezers to help me and my grid paper to help me see if I'm lining up. Where do I want it? Does that look right? Yep. Okay, and then the final thing I'm going to do is just give it a wee embellishment and I'm going to use these which are new from the 2022 20, to 23 catalogue, the In Colour Opal Rounds. So I thought that really you couldn't get better than the in colour jewels that went with this set of in colours. But actually, these could be a close second and they may even overtake as the year goes by. So I'm going to use the Pale Papaya one because um, Pale Papaya is one of the colours of the challenge. And I want to just pick up, and I've used Mango Melody around there, so I do kind of want to pick up that yellowy, colorway. Mm, do I want a big one or a little one? Oh, perhaps we'll have another little one. What do I think? Mm, yep, about there. Okay, uh, I'm not going to show you how I did the inside except to just repeat showing you what I'd already done on that one, which is I simply used some of the stamps out of this set in the challenge colours, the Poppy Parade, the Gorgeous Grape, and the Mango Melody, and a touch of Pale Papaya. But obviously you can experiment and do whatever you want to in the inside of your card. So, there we have it, a happy birthday die cut card using Artistically Inked. If you have questions or would like to know more, you're welcome to contact me through my Facebook page, through my blog, uh, the details of which are going to pop up on the end card of this video and are going to be in the video description underneath. And of course, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything else that I do. And if you live in New Zealand, you're more than welcome to shop with me. And there are links to my online store again in the end card and in the video description below. Thank you very much for joining me.